In a C program, variables can be seen as containers for storing data. They have three elements, a name, a type, and a value. Pointers are themselves special variables that store memory addresses. They point to the location of other variables in the memory. Let's take an example. I will declare one variable. It will store an integer. I will call it var, and I will give it a value. Don't focus on the syntax. I will explain later in the video. Now, I will write a pointer to the variable. I will call it pointer and make it point to my variable. Now, you can imagine a variable as a box. It has a name. It's called var. It also has a value, 42. This here is my variable. The pointer, on the other hand, is very different. It doesn't have a value by itself. It lives alongside the variable and it points to its content. When you manage variable and pointers, you will need to work with them differently depending on whether you want to manipulate addresses or variables. We will get to it. The variables allow you to store and manipulate data within a program. They enable you to perform calculation, tests and store results. You will be able to improve your code readability and thus maintainability by giving meaningful names to the data you manipulate. The names are this one here. Pointers in C allow you to efficiently manage memory. Rather than passing data directly between different parts of your code, you will simply pass the addresses of data in memory, which is much lighter. A pointer can point to a very big address in memory and still weigh the same weight. Pointers are also used when you need to dynamically allocate memory during the code's execution. Finally, they will allow you to directly manipulate data and memory. Let's jump into code. I will use Vim in this example. First, I need to include the library that will allow me to display things in the terminal. This library is the standard in and out library. Now, I create a simple main function. This function will not take any argument as an input. In C, variables first need to be declared before you can use them. To declare a variable, you need to define its type. In our example, I will use a type integer. I will call my variable var. To declare a pointer to this variable, we use the star symbol. We also need to declare to what type of variable it will point to. In our case, an int. Then I use the star symbol and the name of my pointer. In my case, I will name it pointer. Now that you have declared your variable and your pointer, you can define them. First, let's define the variable. To do so, we use the assignment operator. It is the equal sign. We simply input the name of a variable, then we use the assignment operator and give it a value. Let's give it value 42. Now, we need to declare the pointer. To declare a pointer, we use the address of operator. It is the ampersand symbol. Again, we first enter the name of the pointer, then use the address of operator and make it point to the variable. Now that both two are declared, we can print out their content to see the difference. To do so, I will use the printf function. First, we display the variable. I will display my variable that I called var. And then once this is displayed, I will display my pointer. Let's put a line break to make things easy to read. Here, in this piece of code, I first declared my variable and pointer, then I defined them, and finally, I will show their content. I can now exit Vim by doing shift zz, compile my code, and run it. Here, in our example, you can see that first, we display the variable. The variable contains one value, 42. The pointer here contains a hexadecimal address. This is the address of our variable in the computer memory. So you can see that both are stored very differently in the computer. However, we can use them to access the memory in both cases. I will demonstrate this now. As you can see on line 9, accessing a pointer by its name only gives you access to the address of what it is pointing to. To access the content of what a pointer points to, we need to perform an action called dereferencing. This is done again with the star sign, which here is called the dereference operator. To show this, I will simply modify my line 12 and dereference the pointer to access its content. So let's modify the message pointer is pointing to, and here I use the star sign in front of my pointer to dereference it 
and giving access to what's inside. I will also need to modify the statement in my printf function to properly display it. In our case, when I will dereference the pointer, I will obtain an int. So let me modify this flag here to make it accept an int. Now I can exit Vim, save and compile my code. When I run it again, you can see that I now have access in both cases to the content of the pointer, which is an integer 42. Let's finish with one example to show you how you can use pointers to directly manipulate data in memory. Let's write a function that doubles the value. I will create a new file called test2. Again, here I will need to include the standard library for in and out. I will now write a function that doubles the value that you pass as a parameter and returns nothing. I will call it ftdouble. This function will take a parameter that is an integer. Let's call it i. What I want my function to do is to double the value of i. So i equals i multiplied by 2. I will now write a main function to use this ftdouble function. My main function will not take any argument as an input. Again, I will use a variable that will be an int. I will give to this variable the value 42. Now, I will call my ftdouble function on my variable. And finally, I will want to print what happened. I will print an integer and then do a line break. And I will display the content of my variable. I can now exit this code, don't forget to save, compile my test2 file and run it. As you can see here, nothing happened. This is because I passed my variable to the double function. By doing so, I passed a copy of it. Here, on line 13, I passed a copy and performed the operation on the copy itself. To perform an operation on the variable, I need to pass a pointer to the variable to the ftdouble function. To change this, I first need to change my ftdouble function to let it accept a pointer. To do so, I will again use the star sign. I will navigate to line number three and change the input parameter of the function. Here, instead of expecting an integer, I will want to have a pointer to an integer. To do so, I put the star sign in front of it. I will also need to change the function body. Within the function body, I will need to dereference the pointer with the star symbol to access its value. Here, on line 5, I will need to perform an operation on the content of this pointer. So I put a star sign. The content of the pointer will be doubled. So star i equals star i multiplied by 2. Finally, I will need to modify my main function to pass the pointer to the variable instead of the variable itself. As before, I do this operation with the ampersand operator called the address of operator. I will navigate to line 13 and instead of calling ftdouble on the variable, I will call it on a pointer to the variable. Now, I can exit my code, recompile it and run it. That's it. I double my variable. Pointers are one of the key concepts of C programming. Practice will make you master it in no time. It can be hard at the beginning, but the only thing you need to remember is the difference between the ampersand and the star sign. The star sign gives you access to a value, the ampersand gives you access to an address. Good luck and happy coding! Thanks for watching! Don't forget to subscribe to our playlist for more tutorials. To become a software engineer with us, join 42 Berlin by registering to one of our selection PCs at 42berlin.de. Happy coding and see you soon!